Hi and welcome, welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well and continuing. Look, this is part two. So if you're not watched part one, go back and watch it. The kids of 86 and we're looking at Steve Redmond. Of course, when we look at the FA Youth Cup winning team of 1986 and very many of them obviously got to play for the first team. It's no more significant than Steve Redmond. So we got up to 89 uh, 90, where he made 45 appearances. I think it was third season on the trot where he didn't miss a game. So we're going to start with 99 to 1. Kendall's still in charge. Uh, won't be for long, but <laughs> how would Kendall still in charge? Bloody cotton and collar down. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have a look at season 1991 and obviously on to his final season as well. Right, another manager change was ahead. Yes, Mr. Kendall. Uh, left us, uh, deserted us, ran away, went back to his wife in uh, November. And Peter Reid, of course, who'd been playing alongside and been a great asset, obviously, to people like Steve Redmond and a lot of the kids in the squad then that Mel Mates, you know, obviously that that sprinkling of uh, experience that Kendall had brought across was significant. So Peter Reid took charge. Uh, yeah, but uh, again, Redmond started the season having the captain's armband. I mean, already he'd lost, he'd got it and lost it and got it again uh, in part one. But he had his uh, captain's armband taken away as Kendall suddenly decided that, uh, yeah, uh, it was affecting his play. Perhaps perhaps not as significant as when Mel Machin did it, which it definitely did affect his play. But, uh, yeah, so obviously um, Mr Kendall said it was re probably weighing him down at the time. But uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, and he actually got dropped. He dropped him as well. He dropped him to the bench. So that's a first, there's a first for Mr Steve Redmond from when he first uh, broke into the team. Kendall actually brought, put him to the bench, so he missed out on the first three games. He came on in a couple of them, and he was subbing the other one. But by match day four, he was back, and then obviously again he was an ever present. So he's very, not very. In, he didn't pick up many injuries, Steve Redmond, if, if at all, uh, while he was at City. Or he might have done, but he shrugged them off to play anyway. And he returned against Sheffield United away in a one-one draw, and Kendall actually singled out his man of the match performance. As, out, out as exemplary, yeah, so he's probably uh, always forgiven for dropping him, I suppose. And City were doing very well by Christmas, yeah, they were in the top half of the lit table, that was that was fine. And uh, Redmond had, had himself begin to qualify, qualify for Europe. Oh, don't get carried away, mate, uh, you know, that's what we always did, wasn't it? Oh, because he's playing alongside the now player manager, it was strange, uh, Redmond did say, it did, did been, did remark on it and he recalled he said that Peter Reed had made it easier for me and the rest of the squad by his attitude. He told us that when we were out on the pitch, we should call him Reedy, but when we were back in the changing room, it's boss again. A bit confusing. Uh, he made it easy for us by telling us what he wants. That's fair enough. I've, I've, I'm sure, I'm sure there are a few slips sometimes. I don't, I'm sure Peter Reed took it well. And yeah, he'd had his best season on the, as far as scoring goals concerned. He's not a prolific goal scorer, apart from when he was playing for Liverpool Juniors. But yeah, he got three goals at this season against Luton on November the seventeenth, a two-two draw at their place, against Spurs at home on December the fifteenth in a two-one win, and Forest at home at, at Main Road on April the sixth in the three-one win. So he did very, very well. And if we go over to King of the Kipax issue eighteen, which sort of uh, summarises the class of 1991. This is what, not a lot on Steve, but this is what we get on Steve Redmond. Born in Liverpool on the 2nd of November 67, yes, just to remind you, the day after we lost 3-2 at Fulham in the League Cup. There you go. Out of favour at the start of the season, but came on a sub twice and then appeared in the next 44 games consecutively as captain. Another fairly consistent season for Steve, who got on the score sheet with that rocket from a kick at Luton against Spurs at main road, helping on a Wayne Clark effort, and finally with a header at home against Knox Forest. Continued the theme, Steve, and that was it. That was all that was all that said. So uh, King of the Kip are quite happy. He used to go into a bit more detail than that, didn't he? So there you go, that was nineteen ninety one. And his appearances uh, to a sub one as an unused sub and 41 appearances with league and the Cups. So on to 91-92 season. This would be an interesting one as far as... I mean, because this guy, don't get this guy, was um, probably the guys, uh, people like Dr. Gary James, or the guys doing the stats were probably sharpening the pencils. I mean, because this guy was so young when he when he started playing for the team, had very few injuries, if any. He missed any games, very rarely missed a game. We might talk about one in a minute. 
But you know, Alan Oakes' his appearance record was under under severe danger from this guy. Don't forget, but uh, all that would change, unfortunately, for Steve. And so we go to the 91-92 season. On December the 7th, Redmond was unavailable for the first time ever. So as the season started, due to suspension, it hadn't happened before. It was all due to his first ever sending off away at Luton Town on November the 23rd. And he said he accepted the sending off for two bookable events, offences, but he hardly ever got booked as well. He very rarely got booked. But he did state he was unfortunate, but he accepted the ref's decision. <laughs> Fair enough, probably why he never got booked. He was just a decent bloke. Strangely enough, that season, his previous centre-back partner, Colin Hendry, had struggled to get in the team and had moved on a couple of games before this uh, Luton game where he was sent off. And Keith Curl had joined Redmond at the back. He took an extra responsibility as well that season, that, which is never is like a poison chalice for City players. That was a penalty taker, although it didn't last long. Although knocking them in for fun on the training ground, well, I know all about that. I used to do that myself as the goalkeeper. I used to always score them when it came to the crunch. I took one and missed it. Uh, yeah, but so he stepped up at West Ham on 21st September. And he's thought there'd be an image, it should be an image on screen. His foot actually slipped, but he managed to make impact with it. He managed to go into the corner and the goalkeeper. Uh, decided the wrong way so we got away with it we scored the goal it bobbled in the corner but that that was to be his only goal this season and the second uh, penalty he, come up, he came to take was at home to QPR on December the 14th. And this was saved. Yeah, it wasn't a bad penalty. It's it, it, it OK, but Curl managed to follow up and put in the rebound. We actually drew 2-2 two, two that game. But uh, safely for Steve, I think he'd had enough by then. And uh, Curl, he asked if he wanted if Steve wanted Curley to take on responsibility from then on for penalties, and he said yes. So uh, that was the end of his brief sojourn into taking penalties for City. And he continued to play regularly, no problems whatsoever, no hint of a problem, until late February 1992. But it seemed to be coming, yeah, there was a lot of lot of pressure, there was a lot of criticism of the defence and the height, height in defence. Don't forget, we're playing big, cent- big centre-forwards in those days. And we were struggling from dead ball situations and corners, etc. Uh, even with Curly, Curly at the back, because there was a bit of a lack of height. They weren't the tallest guys. And the writing appeared on the wall when he was subbed, subbed off at half time uh, in a 2 1 defeat to Wimbledon on the 22nd of February. So obviously. It was a bit disgruntled. I think there's a few words said between his manager and uh, Steve Redmond. And Paul Hintz, uh, very soon after Paul Hintz, right for the Ant Manchester Evening News at the time, covered, covered the story in a couple of articles. The first article was a soccer special, Drop Redmond Seeks Read Meeting. I feel I'm being a made a scapegoat, says Redmond. I'll just read out a couple of articles he's put together. Unhappy Steve Redmond is seeking a showdown meeting with his manager, Reed after being asked for the visit of Aston Villa today. So that was the, the game after. Uh, the popular manager, the City defender, wants his main role future clarified after losing his first team berth to rookie centre half David Brightwell. Says Liverpool born Red. The last thing I want to do is rock the boat when we're going so well in the first division. But I cannot help think that I've been made the scapegoat for our defeat at Wimbledon last week. I accept I didn't play particularly well at Sellers Park last Saturday, but I didn't feel I was any worse or any better than the rest of the lads. I will be having this chat about my future with the gaffer at the earliest opportunity. It won't be a case of banging the desk and demanding a transfer, but I'm not a kid who is who is just starting out at the career at this stage. I cannot afford to be playing reserve team soccer for any length of time. Yeah, he only got half wages. They only got half wages if they're playing for the reserve team, so he got his wages cut in half. Blues boss Reed will tell his unsettled defence he expects him to stay and fight for his place. I am pleased that Steve wants to clear the air, says Reed. If a player has got pride and ambition, he should be upset to lose his first team place. I felt that Steve has not done himself justice recently and a break from first division football pressures will do him good. Young David Brightwell deserves a chance to show what he can do and keeps everyone there told to have some healthy competition. Stevie Redmond has been a regular first team player for the past three or four years. Yep, and he's still part of our plans. Brightwell was given the chance to save the Blues of Fortune as he made his first division debut. Reed is in the market for a big defender. Yeah, well, we end, we end up with Mr. Vong, don't remember that. And has already had one and a half million bids rejected for Steve Bold of Arsenal and Newcastle's Kevin Scott. But six foot two inch Brightwell hinted that he could solve City's glaring defensive weaknesses when he marked the third Wimbledon striker, John Fashionu, out of the game when coming on as a second half substitute. 
Yeah, so all wasn't well. And then the next article from Paul Ince is uh, Reed puts one million price tag on Redmond. Steve can go, he says, as in Paul Hinsro. Steve Redmond, Manchester City's longest serving player, can leave Main Road. But the Blues would require a million fee for the stocky defender who's just lost his first team place to David Brightwell. So far, Redmond's name has not been officially circulated around the rest of the football league. But 24 year old Liverpool born centre back was told he could move at the right price during the clear the air tour with manager Peter Reid. Says Redmond, all I ever wanted to do since being a kid was to play for City, but I cannot afford to hang around in the reserves. I have a big mortgage and two children to support, but my salary is sliced in half when I'm not in the first team. I honestly cannot see me getting back into the first team unless somebody gets injured. Says Blues boss Reid, I told Steve I wanted him to stay and fight for his place. However, he's not prepared to play reserve team soccer for any length of time. And I can understand his point of view. In the circumstances, I won't stand in his way if an acceptable bid comes in. Meanwhile, City's experienced midfield campaigner Gary Megson has turned down low moves to Cambridge and Tranmere. Megson was impressive as City reserves beat Bradford City 3-1 last night. So all was not well. And it was a sort of, this was it, it was a sort of final throws, wasn't it, for Steve Redmond, um, Redmond, of course. He did manage a couple of starts after that, so he probably got full wages for a couple of matches. Uh, but his regular plays, as I said, uh, Peter, he brought in Michelle Vonk, who uh, obviously took took that place, or even poor, little, poor David Brightwell didn't get the opportunity either. And his final game was on the 28th of March, 1992, a home a home game against Chelsea, and he kept a clean sheet, nil-nil draw, that'll do. And he saw it out of the season, but by the start of the next season, uh, yeah, interesting move. In August 1992, he went to Oldham Athletic. Yeah, so it wasn't easy. It wasn't a simple thing. Redmond, Steve Redmond and Neil Poynton went from City to Oldham in exchange for Rick Holden. Yeah, old Rick Holden was brought in and £300,000. So that was obviously, we were asking a million, weren't we? So, Obviously, we uh, Oldham had to pay us three hundred, three hundred thousand, not the other way around. <laughs> Oldham had to pay us three hundred thousand, and Rick Holden for Stevie Redmond and Neil Point. Yeah. Who got the Who got the good end of that? I'm, I'm not too sure. Yeah, final thoughts. I'll I'll go over to King of the Kipax uh, for the class of ninety one, ninety two for his final the final thoughts on Steve Redmond. They've always been quite glowing up to now. Uh, yeah, thirty eight appearance for Steve with just that one goal, that penalty at West Ham, which he meant to kick with his right, slipped and appeared to hit him with his left or a stubbed toe. Luckily, it trickled in as a sod of turf thundered into the opposite corner. Finally, lost his place in February. And made sure everyone knew he didn't like being dropped. Did he really? Go on half wages, he certainly did. City fans either love him or hate him, and he's only improved slowly since coming into the first team. Is it due to poor first team coaching or poor work by the scouts and youth team coaches who can't see good long term prospects? So another fails but falls by the wayside as the Kill Vonk partnership grows in strength. If but if we need a strong squad and players like Steve to bring in. We're, uh, we need to bring in players if we're to challenge for honours. And he did ask him to stay, but obviously that was done before before this new season started. And as I said, very early into the new season, he was on his way uh, to Oldham Athletic for that swap deal. So his career stats at City, yeah, uh, 283 appearances. That's not bad. Uh, I think he was only 24-ish when he, when he left us. Uh, so as I said, Alan Oakes' record could have took a hell of a hammer if he'd been able to stay. Uh, interesting there about him improving. Yeah, I, th- I think that was a, the thing. He was, he was excellent coming into the team. Did he improve vastly over the four or five years? Possibly not, but then again... You know, did City? Yeah, probably did because obviously under Reid, we were all top top five, top six uh, back in the top division, and we're playing a lot better players. And say uh, it's where perhaps height was far more important against the the big, big burly centre forwards in the in the top division was far harder than playing obviously in the, in the second second tier against uh, slightly more journeymen uh, centre forwards, shall we say? Because that was a quite you know it's a it's a role that the best ones rise to the top, isn't it? Let's be honest about it. So, yeah, interesting point about the fact he didn't improve much. I always liked Steve Redmond, uh, but I can't honestly say I, I cried any tears when he left. Uh, I'd say Vonk and Curl were, were creating quite a partnership, but a, a, a great servant, of course. So he played 283 games, four as sub, scored seven goals. That, that'll do. 
And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me for this little look back at Steve Redmond and extra special of all the kids of 86, I think, because uh, of the say his, his debut as in part one when he ended up uh, playing at Old Trafford, playing at Wembley, playing at Anfield where he used to stand and watch his beloved Liverpool and stuff like that. It was uh, quite unique, uh, an, in- an interesting debut sort of eight, eight or nine games he played at the end of the 85-86 season. But, uh, and also, obviously, captain the youth team at the same time. So it's it's quite unique. Uh, some of the others aren't quite as unique as that. But please join me with some more kids of 76, uh, 76, 86. <laughs> yeah, I might have kids of 76, you never know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, injury-wise, fantastic. I've, I've, I've stopped at Oldham. I've not checked his injury record at Oldham. But uh, City, fantastic. I don't think he was ever injured enough to miss a game. Uh, he only missed games because the suspension has already been dropped. And even then, I think there was only one or two. Uh, take out the first first season, the first 85, 86. I think he missed a, a few then. But obviously, he wasn't a regular one. So once he got that spot from 86, 87, yeah, he just didn't miss games. Uh, very, say, for a big lad, a lot of big lads do get pick up injuries, don't they? But Steve, as we affectionately call tree trunk legs, that just never did. So there you go. What a but what a servant, fantastic player. I've, I've got good memories of Steve Redman, and I think most of the fans were kind to him while he was at City. Let me know your your memories of Steve Redmond if you got them. If you're too young, hope you've hope you've enjoyed this little uh, thing and learnt a little about one of our. Well, we don't. Can you say we don't say we don't say legends about these guys, but a bloody good servant, one of your good good servants of the club. And yeah, for me, he's a little legend. Why not? Uh, I say for so such so young to actually do what he did and coming in coming in for City was was, was brilliant. I thought. So let me know any memories you've got. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for watching. Please, until we meet again, please stay safe, everyone, and we'll do another kids, kids of '86. Let's see, let's see who's next. I won't tell you. You'll have to find, you'll have to find out when it comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Until we meet again, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>